August 2004. Jose Mourinho has just become manager at Chelsea, NASA has landed two rovers on Mars, and Brian McFadden has left Westlife. <laughs> A slightly tumultuous world for 15-year-old Georgie to get her head around. Luckily, though, I had the gadget show to keep me out of trouble. That's right, in 2004, the gadget show was first broadcast to the world. Episode 1 featured Susie in a black cat suit trying to recreate the famous Matrix bullet time sequence using camcorders. Consumers had big decisions to make about their tellies too. High definition broadcasting was just around the corner, so John investigated whether we'd be better off buying LCD or plasma screens. The latest plasmas are now really rather good, and if you're able to spend three or four grand, you're unlikely to be disappointed. As informative as ever. And while those TVs may not be around anymore, John, on the other hand, only gets better with age. And when I wasn't studying as John's Jedi apprentice, there was a new portable console to keep me occupied. The PSP was Sony's first foray into handheld consoles. And when it was launched in 2004, it was the most powerful one to come onto the market, giving Nintendo's DS a run for its money. Though it had some top titles and sold over 80 million units, it never did quite overtake the DS. And back in 2004, weblogs or blogs were becoming mainstream. Blogs may have been around since before 2004, but this was the year that Blogger.com had a major makeover, making it easier for anyone to share their inner musings with the world. I even had a blog once. It was called Hashtag. Unfortunately, that gem is no longer live. And when WordPress appeared, well, blogging finally hit the big time. Today, 20% of websites are created using it. But blogging wasn't the only thing keeping people busy. 2004 was the year for social media. MySpace, anyone? MySpace went live in January and after its first month had over 1 million users. By November, this figure had rocketed to over 5 million and was on the way to launching the music careers of the Arctic Monkeys, Lily Allen and Calvin Harris. But little did MySpace know that there was a new kid on the block. 19-year-old Harvard psychology and computing student Mark Zuckerberg launched his social media site initially just for students in February 2004. Today, there are almost 3 billion users on Facebook. And Mark Zuckerberg is currently the fourth richest person in the world. But it wasn't just old Mark making waves in Silicon Valley. Skype also launched in 2004. This video calling website let grandmas catch up with the fam and business peeps to undertake deals thousands of miles apart. Now anyone could video call you from anywhere. Though you didn't always have to answer it. Sorry Otis, busy. But probably the most popular way to communicate in 2004 was of course using one of these and this particular model was a huge hit. The Motorola Razr. It hit the shelves in July and with its rather striking clamshell appearance, it came with 280 hours of battery life and a whopping 0.3 megapixel camera. Say cheese! <laughs>